Hello everybody. Today we're going with part three in my cooking with herbs and spices series. And I'm continuing with coriander seeds, cumin seeds, cloves, and celery seed. As always, I have to give you this disclaimer. I am not a physician, nor am I a practicing medical practitioner, nor am I giving you medical advice. I am just stating what I have found on WebMD and Healthline, just to name a few of the website sources on medicinal purposes. If you wish to res research the medicinal purposes of herbs and spices I discuss, you can look them up on your web browser of your choice. So today I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone, so to speak, with this herb and spice. And that is coriander seeds. And you're looking at that flat leaf there and you're saying to yourself, hmm, that looks familiar. Yeah, it's cilantro. They're one and the same. Coriander is native to the region spanning southern Europe, northern Africa, and southwestern Asia, but it is also grown in the United States here. Coriander seeds of the cilantro plant are the same thing. And cilantro actually is a Spanish word for coriander leaves. And they both come from the same plant, as I stated before, but they're not interchangeable. Understand that. It is known as Chinese parsley or cilantro. All parts of the plant are edible, but the fresh leaves and the dried seeds, which are both an herb and a spice, are traditionally used in cooking. However, the cilantro plant leaves are um, a great addition to salads and kind of like freshens up your salad, so to speak. Both cilantro and coriander come from the same plant, as I stated before. And in the U United States, the name of the plant's leaves and stem are called cilantro. And coriander is the dried seeds themselves. That's how in the United States they differentiate the two. Coriander is a sweet, aromatic taste with a touch of citrus. The seeds are of the plant are dried fruit actually with the seed deep inside. And unlike cilantro, coriander seeds are mellow flavor profile is slightly more citrusy with notes of sweetness. But if you like dry roast coriander seeds in a pan, it allows the spice to take on a more floral aroma because of the essential oils that are inside the seeds. Now there is a difference between the flavor of ground and whole coriander. The powder works best in incorporating flavor seamlessly into doughs and batters, while the texture of the whole and gently cracked seeds complements meats, dry rubs, and uh, condiments like chutney. Coriander's subtle, sweet, sour flavor profile lends to both sweet and savory dishes. Coriander, you know, is kind of like commonly used in home brewing and pickling recipes a lot. So that's where I'm most familiar with it. In India, though, coriander is mainly used for the taste in their Indian cuisine. Now, medicinally, let's talk about the coriander seeds. Um, they have a diuretic property and um, it elevates um, the tones in your di digestive tract. Now, some people use this as a long term uh, for long term disorders of the intestines like irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, as you hear on the TV, constipation, flagellants, which is, you know, gas, diarrhea, nausea. And it's actually been also used as a remedy for athlete's foot. Um, 
but there is no scientific evidence to support these uses. So you can um, do the research yourself. Um, I personally don't see any normal benefit myself from using it as a, med a medicinal plant. Now in cooking, coriander is used in dishes in connection with other spices. Um, a lot of times it's used with cumin and curry. Now those kind of combinations are usually an Afghan style mutton curare with um, um, pepper, coriander, and cumin, and in chicken curry. And I found also recipes for lamb burgers, which incorporate the uh, coriander into that particular burger. Now, it's also used in uh, broccoli soup with potato and onions. Uh, they use it in dip, you know, uh, probably more so the powder than the seed itself. And it'll range in use from pork chops to seafood. Now, the leaves and the stem, which is called cilantro, as you well know, is used in a garnish or to heighten flavor in soups and eggs. Um, coriander's used in salsa, scallops, chicken and broccoli meatballs, most m chicken dishes. It's used in salad, rice salad, sauces, chutneys, and for, mo for most, most of the meats. And let's not forget seafood. Dishes include mussels with sweet chili sauce, mm. lobster with cilantro and chili butter ribeye with chimichurri sauce, just to name a few. Makes your mouth water, doesn't it? Wow, that is a very versatile type herb and spice. The next herb is cumin. Now, cumin is dried seed of the herb member of the parsley family. Now, cumin sometimes gets confused with caraway seeds and other spices in the parsley family, but it's definitely not the same. Um, its seeds are um, dried and used in cuisines in many cultures, both whole and ground form. The rich, hearty, earthy, warmish type flavor um, with an edge of citrus in this one um, is in most of the recipes that I've found. And the cumin seed is used as a spice for its distinctive flavor and aroma. Um, it can be found in cheese too. Um, Linden cheese, la Leiden, excuse me, Leiden cheese, and um, a lot of traditional breads that you'll find throughout the, um, France. Um, and actually, cumin is actually found in, yes, chili powder. Now, everybody's thinking, well, isn't chili powder a spice or an herb? And I'm going, no, it's actually a combination of several spices joined together to make chili powder. Now, as you can see, I've got the seeds and I've got ground cumin, and this is actually what the plant looks like. And I didn't mention that before, but it kind of looks like dill a little bit with the nice, beautiful blue flowers. This particular um, flower and plant is a black cumin. And that's different than what I have. I do not have black cumin. And this is what it looks like when it's in between the coriander and the clove. Really tiny. Now, um, this seed and uh, powder is usually used in South Asian cooking. Um, and we use it here in the United States, you know, for soups and stews and uh, to spice up gravy with other ingredients. And we use it in pickles and in pastries. Now, medicinally, for generations, people have used cumin to treat conditions ranging from indigestion to diarrhea to headaches. People in India use it to treat kidney and gallbladder stones, eye disease, or even leprosy. 
Now, scientific research is finding evidence that backs up many of these traditional uses, but what it did show was research was shown that cumin may help kill bacteria that get into your body when you and make you sick. Um, a lab that I read, cumin was known to limit the growth of microorganisms, including E. coli, e. coli a bacteria that can cause food poisoning. Its antibacterial properties might explain why people have tradi traditionally used cumin as a preservative because of its um, abilities. Now, dishes that cumin is used in are probably in your favorite chili re recipe and is a key ingredient, ingredient in Indian curries. Middle Eastern specialties such as hummus and Mexican, mes boy, I cannot talk today, Mexican dishes like fajitas. Cumin is a delicious match for meat, specifically beef and pork. Uh, but you can also use it in vegetarian dishes to give it more depth and um, the smokiness of the spice balance out the vegetables with the natural sweetness. Now, if you like savory dishes packed with warm, earthy spices, you'll love cumin recipes. With a pinch of cumin, you can say goodbye to bland dishes. It's an incredible spice that has depth to your me meals and if that have they been missing that, you know, so it, it's a really good aromatic thing to have for you. Now, the next herb that I'm going to talk to you about is cloves. And if you can see, that's what the clove plant is looking like. And those are cloves that are growing there. And what is a clove? It's actually a flower. It's not a seed. And that's what it looks like close up. Now... Cloves are an aromatic flower buds of a tree. They are native to the Maluk Islands in Indonesia and are commonly used as a spice, a flavoring, or a fragrance because, because of the amount of essential oils that are found in these buds. Now... This intensely aromatic spice is subtly sweet flavored that leads plenty of warmth to any dish pairing uh, with other spices like cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice. Cloves have a slight note of bitterness that encounters balances with sweetness. So cloves are basically used in cuisine for Asian, African, Mediterranean, near and Middle East countries, lending flavors to meat such as baked ham, curries, and marinades, as well as to fruits like apples, pears, and rhubarb. Cloves may be uh, used to give aromatic and flavor qualities to hot beverages. You can find that in, say, uh, when you make um, hot cider. A lot of people put cloves in the hot cider to, you know, spice it up and make it a little warmer than normal. Um, they also use this um, particular spice in blends for pumpkin pie. And, and in Mexican cuisine, they normally combine each one of the following spices, cumin and cinnamon, to um, make their dishes. Now, medicinally, cloves are not approved by the U.S. drug and, you know, the FDA. And it's cause for uh, adverse effects. Now, if taken orally, which you would consider that oil of cloves in, uh, that you could find over the counter, um, uh, by people using it over the counter, uh, liver disease, blood clouding, and immune dis system disorders and food allergies. A lot of the information that I'm finding about it isn't exactly the greatest, but studies have determined that the effectiveness is 
the effectiveness of fever redu reduction and mosquito repellent have print um, have not really proven to be true either. So um, a lot of people use oil of clothes for um, dental issues, um, toothaches specifically. But um, although dentists tell you to use it, it, it it, it, it's not meant to be used in long term. Um, you should see a dentist for any pain that you have in your teeth. And I'm advising that because I don't use oil of cloves because I've heard so many adverse things happening with um, the use of that particular medicine over the counter. Um, but, you know, be mindful of what you do. Um, I can't tell you what to do with regards to oil and oil of cloves um, that people use for their dental hat issues. Now, in cooking, I've personally only used cloves in a, in a few recipes, you know, pies, bakery, non-alcoholic drinks, and ham. But you can use it in, la in lamb tangerine. Uh, Mexican chorizo, Moroccan couscous, Caribbean spice roasted chicken, oven crunchy corned beef, just to name a few. So it, it's a pretty good spice that lends a little bit of warmth to each one of your dishes and in some cases enhances the flavor immensely. Now the final spice that I'm going to talk about is celery seed. Now you're thinking, what? A spice? Well, yeah, it's a type of spice, mostly because of the seeds. Now, everybody knows what celery looks like, but they've never seen it actually flower and seed. So um, when you allow your celery plants to grow in your gardens, and if you allow it to continue till the end of the year, it'll flower, and then you'll get these little itty-bitty seeds. And these seeds look exactly like that, and they are packed full of flavor. Now, celery seed is a spice. It is considered um, I, I don't know. I can't tell you with regards to why it's con they, a lot of people don't consider it a spice, but it actually is. Um, these Seed comes from usually wild celery, but um, people mostly grow domesticated celery, and it's the same, pretty much the same thing. The, the same is if you were to get it from a wild celery. And you can find it in ground forms, seed forms, and they even make it in, a, in, in, in an extract. And... Also combined with um, things like salt. You know, everybody's heard of celery seed salt or celery salt. Um, you'll find celery seed in everything from potato salad and seafood dishes to stews, barbecue sauces, and vinaigrettes. It is also happens to be one of the ingredients in the Old Bay seasoning. I never knew that. Well, guess what? There it is. So, it may have not ever been the star of any show, but it, it can be a key player in any of your dishes. And it does lend a lot of flavor of celery to any dish that you have, like potato salad. I use it in potato salad, and it replaces the celery if I don't have celery available. And celery seed is usually used in its whole form, and that means the seeds. And um, examples of dishes that you can use it outside of, say, salads and stuff. You can put it on potato slices. You can put it in crab salad. You can put it in rice dishes. You can make chicken breast pierre, which has ground celery in it and um, it makes for a very nice flavor for each one of the dishes that I just named. Now medicinally 
Celery seeds are dense and particularly rich in calcium, magnesium, and iron. And they have low calories and provide relatively equal amounts of carbs, protein, and fat. Um, they are rich in essential nutrients for your bones, like calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus. And celery seeds are a great source of non-hemi iron. Um, eating iron-rich foods helps your body produce red blood cells, as everybody knows, and may also prevent anemia. The chemicals in different parts of the celery plant may have effects on your body, including lo lowering your blood sugar and blood pressure, and helps with sleepiness. Um, people use to repel... <laughs> celery with mos for mosquitoes and uh, gout and rheumatoid arthritis, but there is no good scientific evidence to support this and the use of celery or celery oil or es extract, whatever. Well, I love talking about the herbs and spices on my channel, and I hope you try to use these spices and herbs in your cooking adventures. So enjoy your day, and I'll be seeing you with the next installment on cooking with spices and herbs. Bye-bye, everybody.